Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new project tutorial where I designed a mixed media canvas for a blog challenge called More Than Words. The challenge today is to use a wood grain pattern and the theme is outdoors. And I created a canvas with a wood grain pattern in the background and many outdoor elements that would fit perfectly with the challenge. I love having something to inspire me by. It's a great way to start a project. And More Than Words is an amazing blog that has a challenge every month with different prompts that it can, you can use to create your projects. It's great to have a prompt for a project because that way you can actually create something with an inspiration. The first thing I did is I took a canvas that was 10 by 12 inches and I took a paper from the Amber Moon collection from Prima Marketing that had the wood grain pattern in the background. Then I took some Prima soft matte gel medium and glued it both underneath and on top so it would seal to the background. I have the 12 by 12 paper pad from the Amber Moon collection. This is another one of the papers and what I did is I took a leftover piece that I had and using a die cut that comes with from the memory hardware from Prima that actually cuts the circle for the dome, I cut it out out of that paper. I chose a paper that would fit perfectly on the corner of my wood grain and cut a circle onto it. I did have to fit it onto my Tim Holtz Vagabond, so I did have to cut it so it would fit in there. And then I just measure to make sure that my dome will fit in the corner as well. Once I knew where the dome was going to go, I took a wood texture stencil from Prima Marketing and using some light paste from Finnebear, I added some wood-like texture in the background using the paste. This was still inspired by the same wood grain pattern and I just added it around the page. I did avoid the area underneath the dome because I knew it was going to be covered by paper. I heat set the modeling paste and then I wanted to put the stuff inside the dome. But to do that I needed to measure where the dome is in comparison to the edges of my canvas. So I placed a circle and then I realized oh that I have to measure where it goes to make sure that it's right underneath the dome. So once I placed it in, once I found a place where it goes, I carefully lifted it and then added the gel underneath the circle and sealed it to the background. Once that was sealed, I took one sentiment that said give thanks from the Amber Moon collection as well and cut around the circle and glued it to the background. Finally, I framed that sentiment with a memory hardware frame from Prima Marketing right on top of the circle. I used Prima Marketing Art Alchemy wax in the vintage gold color and just using my fingers I went and rubbed it on top of the resin frame so it would stain it and create it and make it look more vintage. Then I added some memory hardware pearls from Prima inside the frame so they would keep inside the dome and they wouldn't go everywhere before I stuck the dome onto the actual circle. So once I stuck the dome the pearls were perfectly in place and it was a great way to keep them contained. Then I took the paper that I had used for circling the dome and I just glued it to the background and then sealed it with my gel. After gluing it, I did end up removing the large pearls by lifting it carefully because there were too many pearls inside and you couldn't see the sentiment. Once the glue was all dry, I went back with my stencil and my modeling paste and I added some more of the texture on the areas where I had missed. I let the paste dry really well and then 
I added a coat of clear gesso. I don't show this part here just because it's redundant to show this to you, but I did add clear gesso so then when I would add the sprays I would be able to remove any excess really easily. I started with Color Bloom Spray from Prima Empress Gold and adding it to the top of the canvas just let it run down the page and just wanted to add some of the golden highlights although at the end of the video you will see that you can barely tell that that gold is there but I did want to remove this part from the video because it might get confusing why it's stained differently. Then I grabbed some more of the Color Bloom sprays, some of my favorite autumn colors which is Poppy Field, Pot Marigold, and Spring Dandelion and using a brush or spraying I started adding them at the top of my canvas and letting them run down. I always keep a baby wipe handy so I can wipe off the excess when it runs down in places I don't want it to go. So it's a really good thing to have that on hand because then you can remove any added areas, that, I mean any added spray that you don't like. I continued working with these colors back and forth, interchanging between the orange, the red, and the yellow until I was happy with the way it was looking, letting it drip down the page so it would cover most of the background and really enhance that wood grain texture in the back. Then I went in with the berry wine color, which is a color that I don't often use, but combined with these oranges and yellows for a fall theme is one of my favorite combinations lately. And I actually created quite a few projects this way because I really love this combination of this burgundy color with the orange and the red and the yellow. So I added it here and also let it drip down the page and I love the darkness that it gives to the fall theme. I love how these colors go in between the textured grooves from the stencil and create the really nice, rich, beautiful texture in the background. I don't usually like to cut this part where I am spraying, even though it's redundant that I'm going over the same thing over and over, but I just want to show the process that is layered. So sometimes you have to add, then dry, then go again and add some more colors because when the color dries, they become lighter. So it's really important to show you the whole process of the coloring. Some things I do cut off, like putting gesso on the background, but something I feel is important to just keep showing so you see the process fully. You can see how intense the colors are here, but when everything dries, as you will see soon, everything kind of becomes less dark and it kind of blends into the background. My next step was to embellish around the dome, and I took a bunch of different Prima flowers to embellish. These are not the ones that match the collection, the Amber Moon collection. 
These are just old Prima flowers that I had in my stash because I have so many flowers that I accumulated over the years that I really wanted to use what I have. So I just grabbed any type of matching flowers that I could get. I also grabbed some resin leaves and also acorns. These are Ingvild balms from Prima that I used to also have. So I try to use what I have in my stash and this is something that I encourage people to do is just use whatever is in your stash. However, I will list below the Amber Moon flowers as well because those match the collection perfectly. So you can definitely use those if you want. And I actually took some Fabri-Tag glue and just glued all the flowers and embellishments to the background. Then I went back into my stash and grabbed some smaller flowers and started gluing these to the background as well. I find that combining large and small flowers create a really nice composition for any type of project, whether it's a canvas or a layout. The flowers in different sizes really make everything look nice. And one of the key ideas for the composition of flowers is to have them really close to each other so they bunch up and look like they look in nature. So here I am just adding the last few little flowers that I've collected and just adding them in different areas. It's also good to have flowers that are different sizes and also different heights so then you really get that really nice bouquet looking embellishment. I grabbed the wax again and using my finger added some extra highlights to all the resins to kind of help them blend into the background because they were very starky white and I wanted them to be a bit more golden. Then I took some of the pearls and I glued them in certain areas so they would match the rest of the pearls and the rest of that really nice wine color that was in the background. To add some more of that burgundy color, I took the Prima Marketing Metallic Acrylic Paint from Finnabear. This is the dark velvet color and I painted around the edges of the canvas so it would frame the canvas and also made sure that I get onto the inside of the edges as well to create a nice border around the whole canvas. I used the paint to also create some shadows in between the flowers so it would all tie in together. Then I took the vintage gold wax again 
and added some highlights on top of the dark velvet paint to add some of that golden color on top of the burgundy one that I had put at the border. That really blended everything beautifully and created a really nice border to the canvas. I went back and found some more resins that I wanted to add to the canvas. I got some Prima Butterfly resins and added them in certain areas to the canvas. Then I added some more embellishments. So these are straight from nature. They're not acorns or pine cones. I really don't have a name for them, but I found this jar at the dollar store with different natural embellishments. And I thought they were perfect for this canvas, so I just ended up gluing them in certain areas. They look kind of like acorns, but not really. And they look kind of like pine cones, but they're really not pine cones. I'm not really sure what they are. If somebody knows the name, feel free to leave it in the comments for others to know. But I just thought they looked beautiful and they were perfect for the canvas. Finally, I took both the gold wax and the black, a dark velvet metallic paint and added some highlights to the butterflies to help them blend into the background. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this canvas has inspired you to create something inspired by nature with a wood grain background or just anything that incorporates the outdoors and nature itself. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel or visit me on my website linked above. Bye!